John Coffey, you have been condemned to die in the electric chair by a jury of your peers, sentence imposed by a judge in good standing in this state. Questions? Do you leave the light on after bedtime? So he was hot stuff when he was writing horror, because that was different. But I think he realized, too, that there's only so many times you can go, boo! <laughs> On this edition of Books Into Film, we go inside the mind of Stephen King. was first published in 1974. The title character was based on a composite of two schoolgirls Stephen King knew in high school. The book earned King $400,000 for the paperback rights alone, allowing him to write full-time. Author Edo Van Belcom has been called the Canadian Stephen King, a title he's not particularly fond of. He's written several books, including a guide on how to write horror. He says as good as the Carrie novel was, director Brian De Palma made Carrie the movie that much better. The thing that really shocked people is that opening scene of the film where Carrie is having her period. Oh my God, you know, here's real life and a real life horror and it's depicted naturally and nastily with all of these girls throwing tampons at her. I mean, that's a shock. Carrie would earn two Oscar nominations and make Stephen King a hot commodity in Hollywood. His book, Salem's Lot, became a TV movie in 1979. The following year saw the release of The Shining. Even though the film was directed by Stanley Kubrick, the man behind 2001 A Space Odyssey, King felt disappointed with the movie version. Brad Brown. The Shining scared the crap out of me. Here's Johnny! When it first came out, Stephen King said of The Shining that it was like this great big beautiful car with no motor in it. He didn't like it. In 1997, Stephen King made the version of The Shining he'd always envisioned. But the TV miniseries failed to convince fans of the original that they were watching a superior version. And here is The Shining television miniseries why? Did we need it? Well, maybe, maybe not. But somebody out there thought, you know, we're going to do it justice. We're going to make it properly. So even if you have the best of everything, budget, a great director, all kinds of time, uh, everything like that, the author is still saying, you know what? They didn't do my movie justice, my book justice. We, let's make it again. We'll do it right this time. While King was hamming it up on the big screen, more and more of his novels were being turned into movies. 1983 saw three major releases alone. Christine, The Dead Zone, and Cujo, the story of a rabid St. Bernard. King wrote the story after his own run-in with a mechanic's vicious dog. Fans of the novel would notice one major change in the movie version. Cujo? At the end of Cujo, the novel, the boy dies. In Cujo, the movie, the boy lives. Because they figured out that, you know, moviegoers aren't going to sit for going through the entire movie and having the boy die at the end. They want to feel good when they get out. And King realized that that was probably the best way to go and agreed to it. But I think it's, you know, the gritty realism of having the boy die in the novel that makes it so powerful. Stephen King was so prolific during the late 70s and early 80s, he published six works under the pseudonym Richard Bachman. One of the most famous was The Running Man, about a violent reality show that uses convicts as contestants. The 1987 film version starred Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be back, only in a rerun. Go! Early on, it was just a way for him to get four unpublished novels into print. Okay, he was making bucketfuls of money for his publisher. He had these early novels that he couldn't sell. So he said, okay, I've made all this money for you. I want to publish these books. We'll put it under a pseudonym and, you know, let the book buying public decide. You guys want to go see a dead body? 
1982 saw the publication of Stephen King's Different Seasons Anthology. It was a collection of four stories, each set in a different season. The works were unlike anything King had published in the past. The Body became the basis for director Rob Reiner's hit film, Stand By Me. Train! I think that when The Body, the novella, from different seasons was made into Stand By Me by Rob Reiner. I think a lot of people were caught off guard because here is this poignant drama, you know, about kids growing up and you're watching it and you have to be told, you know who wrote this? It was Stephen King. And people are dumbfounded. They, they can't believe it. Really? Oh yeah, you mean it doesn't have uh, a haunted car, a haunted hotel, a haunted this, haunted that? No, it's just a slice of life, a uh, very dramatic thing about four kids growing up. And I think people kind of took notice of that. All right, all right. Mickey's a mouse, Donald's a duck, Pluto's a dog. What's goofy? Movies based on Stephen King stories have earned more than a billion dollars worldwide. But King doesn't always have creative control when it comes to films based on his works. Take 1992's The Lawnmower Man, for example. King sued to have his name removed from the virtual reality thriller, which had little to do with his 1975 short story. For the most part, Stephen King has been you know, really well done by the movies and well represented, but there are a lot of movies out there that say they are Stephen King uh, movies when they're not. The prime example is Lawnmower Man, which is a short story about some guy uh, going around the lawnmower eating grass and his mouth frothing up with, you know, lime-colored goo, and somehow they made a movie out of that. 